given that we're talking about microphones and we're talking about Alexa even being able to listen in, even in a really noisy room, I guess the natural next question is, does that mean it's always listening? No, not at all. What they're doing is they're only looking for that wake word. And so once we do that, then we turn on the rest of the system. The thing about these devices is that you, you are essentially putting an internet enabled microphone in your house. And I know that some people feel really uncomfortable about that, whereas other people are totally fine with it. Ultimately, all those concerns about privacy, they come down to, do you believe that the company is not misusing your data? Thanks to the microphone array and the genius of Beamforming, your virtual assistant is able to listen to your questions with clarity. But on its own, that is not enough for it to make sense of what you're saying to it and reply with a sensible answer. For Alexa to understand us, it needs some sort of brain. And that is powered by a key piece of technology that isn't a physical component, but trust me, it's vital. It is a complex network of algorithms that form Alexa's artificial intelligence. Alexa is pretty good at answering difficult questions. Alexa, what's the capital of the Solomon Islands? The capital of the Solomon Islands is Honiara. Pretty impressive, but let's push it a bit. Come on. Something a bit more ambiguous. Alexa, what is love? Love is sharing your chocolate with someone, even if you want to scoff it all yourself. Hmm. We'll agree to disagree on that one. It's the artificial intelligence that allows the Alexa to hear, to respond, to answer your questions, to play music when you want it to. Its AI has been trained to interact with us in a way that feels human. But how does AI manage this? The answer starts 70 years ago. In a 1950 paper, scientist Alan Turing posed the question, can machines think? It was one of the earliest explorations of what would become known as artificial intelligence. Anyone who urgently wishes to know whether 2 to the power of 127 minus 1 is a prime number or not can be given the answer by an electronic brain. In 1952, Christopher Strachey programmed a computer to play a simple game of drafts. When he fed in his 20 pages of code, his AI-driven drafts game was challenging everyone in the lab. It's time now that it got down to serious work. In the mid-1960s, AI was used in an interactive device. Eliza was the world's first chatbot and could hold a basic conversation. My boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here. It didn't have much chat, replying with only pre-programmed phrases. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. During the 1970s and early 80s, AI's progress slowed, funding dried up, and the hardware available struggled. It's not intelligence at all. It adds up numbers and subtracts numbers and multiplies numbers very, very quickly. That changed with the advent of more powerful computers in the late 1990s. By 1997, AI even looked like a match for human intelligence. IBM's most powerful supercomputer, Deep Blue, stunned the world and defeated the best chess player on the planet, Grandmaster Garry Kasparov. The game of chess, supposedly a true test of human intellect, will never be the same again. This looked as though AI was finally living up to the promise of the 1950s. But then it proved to be a bit of a false dawn. Deep Blue's moment in the spotlight wasn't the breakthrough it seemed. And that is because the computer couldn't actually think for itself. It was just following a set of rules. 